What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another video of Cup of Code 01. Today we are doing the coinflip.py. We're gonna run through this line by line, and then when we're done, we'll actually execute the code. So starting, uh, let's get right into it. First off, import random. So we've seen this library a couple of times. Then the uh, system's gonna print. I will flip a coin 1,000 times. Guess how many times it will come up heads? Press, let's do that. Press enter to begin. And then we have an input and that input is going to be enter and then we have flips we have a variable flips equals zero and heads equals zero so somebody might be saying why don't we have tails well it's very simple if we know we're flipping it a thousand times and we're counting how many times we have heads then the subtraction of 1000 minus heads equals tails and i added that into here at the end just so you can see that because it's fun i like to do this code multiple times so you can see that the random function does work because if you actually debug this there is no way in hell we're going through this a thousand times. I'll tell you that right now. Um, but the number of flips and the number of time heads come up, it can seem identical in the beginning, but the more flips you do, then the greater the, the divergence um, from 50-50 or from 100-100 rather. Um, and we're also not going to physically ever flip it a thousand times where the computer can do this, uh, what seems almost instantaneously. So now we have a conditional loop while flips is less than a thousand right now it's zero uh if random dot rant in zero or one equals one so zero would be false we can think of that as tails and one equals heads so if it randomly picks one heads equals heads plus one so the heads count right now is zero so if it randomly picks a one on a flip one equals one increase heads by one regardless flips goes up so let's say it gives a zero it's going to skip this go to the next executable which now is just the the variable flips equals flips plus one so then flips is going to go up by one so if this got three zeros in a row this will go up by one another zero up by one another zero up by one this goes up by one this goes up by one and flips would also go up by one because this is run this is outside of the if loop as you can see because we're not indented in if we went like this then flips would only run when heads ran so we don't want that we want it we want otherwise they'd be identical flips and heads would be the same if flips equals 900 so pretty much when we get to 900 flips 900 flips and there have been how many heads have we gotten so far so we're just taking the integer that we have we're converting it to a string so we can print it out um, and then the plus is just going to concatenate all of that uh, if flips equals 1,000, I'm sorry, 100, print at 100 tosses, heads comes up, same thing, and then 500, halfway done, if heads comes up, um, how many times has heads come up so far? So we could do this at any intervals that you wanted to do. Um, the order of this is, so when you got to, if I made this 100, then it would get to 100, it would stop. Then when I get to 500, it might not run. So I have to have the order of it can be important on if loops sometimes. But each one of these is a separate individualized if loop. They're not nested within each other. So when this is all done, pretty much when flips equals 1,000, because when it gets to 99, 9, it's still less than 1,000. When it gets to 1,000, then none of this is going to run. Then we're printing out a blank line. This also could have been escape n like we have here. Print out of 1,000 coin, coin tosses, and then this escape t means tab. Heads came up, and then we're saying put in the value of heads. And this variable of heads had been constantly changing based on this part of the code, based on what the computer randomly is picking on its on its flip. And then I have the variable tails, and I said equals 1,000 minus an integerized version of heads. So I'm just creating integers so that we can do the math, because if this was a string, if the heads came out as a string, then it would say you can't do integer minus a string. So I'm just creating that to make it clean. So whatever value it gets in here, 1,000 minus that does equal tails. And then I'm printing out a tab. Tails came up, and then we're saying, give me the, the output for the variable tails. Give me a new line, and then we'll say, were you close? So like you can guess what you wanted to do. So I'm on coin flip, so I'm going to run this, and let's see what we got here. So guess how many times heads will come up. Let's say 537. I'm going to hit Enter. It is running the code. I'll hit Enter again, because that was our input at 100 tosses heads came up 48 times so far so we're not 50 50 halfway done that's our 500 and heads came up 235 times so again we're not 250 we're further away from the median 
900 flips, and there have been 440. So out of 1,000 coin tosses, heads came up 491, tails came up 509. So we said 537, I think. So were we close? No. I'm going to run it again, and we're going to enter, enter, and this time we're 503 for heads. Let's run it again and see what we get. 503, now we're 476. So as you can just see, this at least the random function is being random. It is, it is, it is going. But the ratio is somewhat consistent. Ironically enough, it feels like there's always more heads than there is tails. I wonder if there's some kind of a deep-seated bias within the system. Ah, now we got a heads less than tails. Um, so again, this is a, a quick piece of code to run. Uh, good conditional loop um, and, and uh, good iteration uh, practice as well. Um, so with that being said, quick little file today. Run through it, play with it. I'll even blow this up on the screen so it's easier to see in case you're copying this. Have fun with the code, and I will see you guys in the next video.